A very good morning and greetings to everybody that has made time to join us this day. As we always say, this is the day that the Lord has made for me and for you to rejoice and to be glad in the presence of the Lord. You did not make a mistake by joining us and I'm going to encourage you, invite somebody to tune in. There's a wedding season that I have in store for you and for them and God will do the rest in their lives this morning in the name of Jesus. Can we just start by praying? Holy Spirit, we invite you now to guide us and to lead us every step of our way. Tato mudimu how muma pilongaruna above everything else. We Surrender so to the Mudimo Momazo Hong Ao. Relieve or guide the Kalinsula Hao in all things. In Jesus' name we pray and somebody say Amen. If you've got your Bible, can you just hold it in your hand? Let us make a confession. This book, the B I B L E, is the Word of God. And I can tell you, it is the most complicated book in the whole universe. Unless you allow the Holy Spirit to interpret the Word, and the Word will start making sense to you. That's why the Bible says to you. You, it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. This book is a mystery itself. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand it. Just hold it in your hand. Whatever means that you used to read the Bible, let's make this confession. We are invoking the same Spirit who wrote the word, who is able to interpret the word in order for us to have an understanding of the word. Just say this Bible. It is God speaking to me. I believe and I receive the word of God as the truth, nothing but the truth for my life right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My name is Tabo Mokotani. I am the pastor of Royalty Baptist Church in Tabazimbi, and we're going to buffet together in the Word of God. If you remember uh, in RBC, it's our month of dimensions of love. We are closing the series today. The, tomorrow we'll be studying a new series. Next week, Sunday, we'll be studying a new series. As you know, this is the last day of the month of February. Allow me this morning to speak to you on the subject titled, Love Commits. Le rato la comida. Love commits. You want to know how much they love you. Here's my answer. Look at their commitment towards you. Look at their commitments towards you. If you love someone, you will commit to them. They can put a ring on your finger of engagement for five years. I can tell you, there's no commitment of love. Love commit if you love somebody you will commit to them you won't even hesitate to commit to them do not fall into the trap hearing no we will cross the bridge when we get wait for me to divorce my my partner then i will i will i will marry you i'm telling you they will never ever commit to you because love doesn't waste time love always commits whenever you love something you always commit to that thing you remember i preached the sermon hearing a uh, uh, vision if if he's someone why on the, the the vision will always trouble the visionary if it doesn't trouble you it's not your vision trust me if god shows me a certain project if i'm not willing to commit my last money to watch that project it's a sign that i don't love that project because love will always commit the moment you see yourself hesitating to commit to something or to someone it's a sign that you don't love that you don't waste time when you love someone or when you love something you always commit to that thing i mean even my wife if they tell me uh, pay lobola for 50,000 rent i'm gonna pop up uh, 20,000 extra and give it to them 70,000 and i tell them keep change you know why because i love her i love her if i grumble and com and, and and complain about many things before i commit it's a sign that i'm not sure even if i love her because love always uh, will commit even a church some of you you are You've been attending that church. You are not even a member. You are, I don't know if you are called a visitor or, or what, because you've been going there for about six months or 12 months. So we can't call you a visitor anymore. But you are not yet a member. It's a sign you don't love that church. Many people are parasites. They just want to come and eat and go without any commitment. Now during lockdown, you can ask yourself a question. You are a member of a certain church. 
you never even tithe for the past 12 months towards that church. And you claim that's your spiritual home. Even when you see your, your father, you call him daddy, father, whatever titles you, you give them. You claim you love them, but you are not willing to commit towards that church. I've got projects that I'm doing as a businessman. Trust me, every project that God has given me that I love, I have committed towards. I have sown seeds. I've put up money. I've invested in those projects. You know why? Because I love them. Once you love something, you won't hesitate to commit towards that thing. I mean, even God says in Psalm 37 verse 5, he says, commit, commit, commit your way to the Lord. Also trust in him. And guess what? God will bring it to pass. Before God can bring it, it. You know what I'm talking about, that it that we've been praying for. Before he can bring it to pass, trust me, the first way, you must commit yourself towards that thing. As long as you are not committed towards that thing, it will never come to pass. I must commit myself to God, not only to the promises of God, but I must commit myself to the Lord. It's a sign that I love God. Before God can bless me, he wants to know how committed am I towards him. Before he can bring it to pass, whatever you've been praying for, for all this time, it's only held up by commitment. You are not committed towards that thing. As I speak to you, as a single lady, as a single man, you want to get married. Show your commitment. Those things cannot come to pass as long as you are not committed towards that thing. You prayed for your husband only for a month. He never came to pass and you gave up. It shows you don't love. You don't love him. You don't love the marriage that you are claiming you want to get married. You don't love it. You must show commitment. Commitment is a sign that I love that thing. I love that person. I love that project. I love that church. I love my children. I love my family. It's a sign of commitment. That's why today we've got too many single mothers. You know why? Because there are fathers out there. They only donated a seed to make a child. But they are not willing to father, to commit towards those children. Love always commit. So don't ever misunderstand or, or confuse the, this thing called emotion, feelings, and love. Love is progressive. It grows through time. But feelings, they come and go. So be careful that you don't stay in an environment where you think you are loved. But you are not loved. Because there's no what commitment i mean think about it you gave that man three children but still there's no ring in your hand you stay together you cook for them you do everything for them you live a married life i'm sorry but these things needs to be preached these things needs to be preached the reason why we've got a lot of gender-based violence issues and stuff like that i'm not please 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 I'm not trying to undermine the victims of gender-based violence, but I'm trying to show you or the foundation. Once the foundation is broken, what shall the righteous do? We need to fix the foundation. People must show commitment before you can open up your life to them. Let them commit first. Let's start at the point of commitment. Buy me flowers and all these things. It's not commitment. I need you to commit to me. So that I can know that you love me. So please don't confuse these things. Because we've got a lot of problems today. But when you look back it's because there was no commitment in the first place. And guess what? I gave this person everything. I opened my bank account. I opened my house. I opened everything. I even introduced this person to my kids, my family members. But guess what? There's no commitment. There's no commitment. They can leave anytime because there's no commitment. So we need to commit ourselves. Marriage was made to commit us because God knows we are loose people. Wherever we go, we want to do this and this. Now, when you are committed, it brings you, it brings a balance in your life. But if you are not committed, then there's a, there's a, there's a problem. Turn with me to the book of Daniel chapter number three. Uh, you can read it from verse number one. It's an interesting 
interesting story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But I'm picking up the story from verse number 20. Read from verse number 1 so that you can get the, the, the background. Uh, verse number 20, and it says, And King Nebuchadnezzar commanded the strong men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were bound in their clothes, their tunics, or undergarments, their turbans, and their other clothing, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame and sparks from the fire killed those men who handled Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king saw, and he was astounded. And he jumped up and said to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered, True, O king. Then he answered, Behold, I see four men, and they are not bound, but they are loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And guess what? They are not at the fire, it's not burning them. And the form of the fourth is like the sun of the gods. Gods with a small g. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire. May the Lord bless the reading of the word. Just to give you a background, uh, in the olden days, Babylonia, it was, uh, I call it an economic powerhouse of the world at this time. It was the powerhouse of the world. And now the Israelites somewhere, they sinned against God. And God allowed the enemy to come and capture them to go and be captives in the land of Babylon. Now, when they arrived in Babylon, what the Babylonians do, they chose the, the, the children amongst the Jews with a high IQ. They took all these young kids and they interviewed them. And those that were intelligent, they put them aside. What do they do with them? They take these children and take them to the best institution in Babylon so that they can train them the system of Babylon so that in the near future, these young boys and girls can become rulers in the land of Babylon. All that they need is their brain. But hardly did they know that these Jews have been taught the Ten Commandments from childhood level. They know there's a clause in the Ten Commandments which says you shall never ever bow down to any other God except the Lord of the heavens and the earth. They know they are not supposed to bow down to any other God. No matter how much they taught them the system of Babylon, but they could never remove the foundation that was laid down in this boys that's why i always encourage parents in my kids bring your children to children's church so that they can be taught the word of god at a young age so that when they grow up they shall never depart from that root that we taught them from young age but the problem we leave them to grow up in the street and the street will teach them the things of the street that's why some of your kids are even cursing in your household but in your household there's nobody who's cursing why because they learned these things from their friends in the street but once you lay down the foundation while they are still young trust me even if they can take an off ramp along the way they will never ever forget the seeds that has been sown on the inside of them Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego and Daniel they grew up in the king's chamber they were taught all the rules and regulations of Babylon but they never forgot where they come from they never forgot that there is a god of heaven and if there's a god of our own grandparents uh, abraham uh, uh, jacob and isaac they don't forget those things they've been sown on the inside of them then it came to pass that kid nebuchadnezzar made an an image of gold a statue after he made the statue he released a decree or a law which says anybody who hears the sound of a horn or a trumpet boop, 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 boop. the moment they hear that sound you stop whatever you are doing you look to the direction of the statue you bow down and pray towards that statue 
It happened almost twice or three times in a day. He released a decree. A decree, it's a law that can never be invoked. So once the, cre the, the, the king released that law, that law can never be revoked. It will always remain. That's why the, the book of Job 22, 28, you shall decree, you shall decree. And guess what? That decree, it shall be established in your life. A decree, it's a law that can never ever be revoked. Some of you, you allowed the demon to run riot in your family, in your kid's life, in your, in your husband's life life in your wife's life while in your mouth you are able to release a decree it's a law that can never ever be revoked the king nebuchadnezzar released a decree and he said when you hear the sound of a horn or a trumpet boom, 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 you stop whatever you're doing you look to the direction of the statue and you bow down and pray towards that statue but hardly did he know that this young boy is that he taught in the best institution of babylon he cannot change the seed that has been sown on the inside of them. They knew they are not supposed to bow down to it. No matter how much the king takes care of them. No matter how, how educated they become. Because most of us, the more education we get is the more we forget the basics of the word of God. What we have been taught from Sunday school. What we have been taught the word on Sunday. Whenever education gets into our head, we forget. And we forget the demons are not intellectual. Once you fight a spiritual warfare, I'm telling you, your education is useless. I'm not discouraging people to study. I am studying also, but I will never allow my education to override the word of God in my life. Whatever the word says, let my education, I contradict that, the word, I stop everything and I focus on the word of God. Most people, by killing you off ramp because they allowed their education status to move them from the basics of the word of God. That's why we've got a mess today. We are dependent on on the information of the world more than what the word of God is saying. When trouble arises, we always want to have information of the intelligentsia, but we forget there's an answer in the word of God. God knew about your problem and he had the solution before that problem came to pass in your life. Never ever disregard the word of God in your life. When Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they heard the sound, they decided not to bow down. Not that they undermine King Nebuchadnezzar. They honor the God of heaven more than the gods of this world. They decided we are not going to bow down. We are going to stand up and go on with our work. We're not going to bow down to an image. And I always say, if you made a golden image as a god, that means you are the creator. Now, that elevates you to the level of a god. Now, how come you being a god can worship an image that you made? God cannot worship me. I'm the creation. I'm the one who's supposed to worship my god up there in heaven. Nebuchadnezzar made a golden image, a small god, but he wants himself and everybody to bow down and worship something that he made. He is the creator. How come he can worship something that he created? That's how useless and stupid the devil can make you at times. He can make you to worship an idol. And guess what? An idol has been man-made. It's not made by God. But we end up worshiping these idols. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, no, we will never worship that golden image. I wonder how many of us would have stood up like them and said, we will not worship a golden image. People give up easily. People are not committed anymore. That's why when you look at South Africa itself, the statistics of divorce is about four and five in ten marriages. They always end up in divorce. That means half of the marriages that were performed last year, they ended up in divorce. All of them. Because people don't have the heart to commit. When things are not going well, you easily pack your bags and go back home you don't try to resolve these things people don't have the heart to commit anymore that's why even our committed are conditional 
Don't be fooled by the marriage voice, by the marriage vows that uh, in sickness and in health, in, in good and in bad, moneyed or no moneyed or whatever, things are not going well. I will stand with you and comma until death do us apart. That's the biggest lie that you have ever heard in world. Because people, they always make this commitment, but find them. But you left something wrong in your life. You pack your bags immediately and go back home. You forget till death do us apart. Because people are not willing to commit anymore. The reason why we don't see the results is because we throw in the towel too quickly. That's why we don't see the result. We are like microwaves. Everything that you warm up in a microwave, it takes two minutes, five minutes, then you eat it. You don't want to stand at the stove and cook food for three hours anymore. We are living in the world where things are instant. We want the results now. You saw a seed yesterday. You want a plant tomorrow. You want the fruit the third day. It doesn't work that way. All these things have been ordained at their own season in at their own time but you need to have a heart of commitment i spoke about churches most of us we are in churches but we are not committed to those churches most of us we are in marriage but we are not committed to the institution of marriage before you can commit to your partner commit to the institution of marriage and you will see things will be successful in your life but the tata barona Arisana commitment. Dere la chela tulo kapila ringa langa la fela. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they decided to commit themselves. Komu dimu wale hodimu. Lehe ba kudi se mullo. Rekasu wele mullo. And Bible says, King Nebuchadnezzar, he made a fair, a fairy fire furnace. And the Bible says, when he heard that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they did not bow down to his own decree. Remember, a decree is a law that can never be revoked. It's a decree. There's no way King Nebuchadnezzar can change that law. It's been made and it's been made. That's why a commitment, it's got a one-way route. It doesn't have a U-turn. Once you commit, you must know it's a one-way route. It doesn't have a U-turn. That's why Bebe Lere Modimu o Choile divorce. You know why I Choile divorce? Because he knew this is a one-way route. There's no way of return. But the devil made it a point that he will bring things into marriages whereby we don't commit anymore. People end up divorcing. We go around. There are baby mamas and baby fathers. There's courage. There's too many things. And this message is not designed. To crush you who's been divorced. The mistakes there really, really. Let's not allow our children to go through the same thing. I can tell you, as I'm speaking to you, Satani in his throne, he's rejoicing. He's looking down at all this mess that he He is rejoicing. And in 29 about the devil. He's the father of all this confusion. He's the father of all this division. He's the father of all these lies. But in his kingdom, he doesn't allow division. The kingdom of the devil, it's an orderly kingdom. There's no way a devil, I mean a demon, can revoke a command that the devil has given to them. The demons, they obey the commands of the devil. That's how orderly is the system. Of darkness but come to the system of the kingdom of God there's too much disorder why because people lack commitment everyone room I am rude to how it tell them you speaking on a Sunday morning level or give up a guy but I'm not saying he's right learned a little wrong stick with them I've learned something through the process of life go hurry when people who are in my circle, they make mistakes, I don't rebuke them publicly. I rebuke them privately. In public, I cover them. The arrows, they hit me. But in public, that's when I can rebuke them. My brother, my sister, you have done wrong. You shouldn't do that again. But in public, I protect their dignity. 
You can imagine how many family spats that we saw in public that were supposed to be fought in private. There are some things that you must learn to protect the dignity of your partner, the dignity of your children. Protect them in public, but fight those fights in private. Then you will see victory in whatever we are doing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused. And kid Nebuchadnezzar throw them into the fiery furnace. The Bible says he stood up. When he looked from a distance, he saw four men walking in the fire because they bound them. But he's surprised. These men are not bent by the fire. And they are walking in the fire, singing songs of victory in the fire. And he called the people that were around him. Did we not throw three men bound into the fire? They said, yes, king, we did that. And he said, I'm astonished. I'm surprised. I see four men walking in the fire. And the fourth man looks like the son of the God. Pride I am allowed or are is the son of God. But the statement is a high. Habits are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Ujorore. Ore, then King Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants not of the gods, of the most high God. Come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar, you saw four men walking on the fire, but only three men came out of the fire. What happened to the fourth man? One of my pastors said, he's still in the fire. His dwelling place is in the fire. Why? He's waiting for those who commit themselves to God who loves their father unconditionally because the world will reject them. The world will throw them into the fire. The world will throw them into the valley. I am waiting for them in the valley. In the shadow of the valley of death, they shall not die, but I shall be with them. I shall carry them because they will find me in the valley. They will find me in the fire. Jesus was already in the fire and they left him in the fire. Why? He's waiting for me and he's waiting for you so that when we are rejected by the world, he will find us there in the fire. In fact, we will find him there in the fire because once you commit, trust me, the devil releases a legion that will bring rejection to you. That's why marriages today, they are under attack. You know why? Because it's a zone of commitment. And the devil doesn't like anybody who commit to something that is contrary to his kingdom. Love always commits. Father, I thank you. Somebody's listening to me. I know and I don't undermine whatever challenges that they are facing. Increase, my Father, the anointing of commitment on the inside of them. Give them the strength and the power that as they go through the fire, they go through the valley. Help us not to throw in the towel, but to put our trust in you, knowing that you will bring it to pass. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood in the midst of all the attacks. They stood for you, my Father. It's a sign of love. It's a sign of commitment to you. Give us the same strength and power to stand in the midst of challenges. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are listening to me right now and you have never received Lord Jesus as your personal Savior and your Lord, I'm going to ask you to pray with me. All of us, we pray the same prayer. There's nobody who will get into the kingdom through the back door. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can ever come into the presence of the Father except through him. I'm speaking to you 
can repeat after me. Don't worry, there's no distance in the spirit. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived it before you. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me now with the blood of Jesus. Make me a brand new person. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer for the first time. Welcome to the house of God. Your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. <coughs> Even the devil can come up with all the tricks. They shall not work in you. You are covered now. If you don't have a spiritual home, we'll, we'll uh, display the address of our church on the screen. You can come and visit us. If it's too far for you, find a faith preaching Bible-based church in your area so that you can grow spiritually in Jesus' name. Thank you all of us for joining this session today. And we really appreciate your, your time. Let us meet again next week, Sunday, 11 a.m. And keep walking by faith in Jesus' name. Amen.